I saw this amazing animation on X and then wanted to recreate it. Can we do this with CSS only? So I went on a journey for five live streams to try and recreate the animation using CSS only. And this is the result. I'm very pleased with the result and I want to teach you how you can do that as well. But before that, if you don't want to make this and want to support me, there's a link in the description down below where you can download this template for a fair price. So now let's get on with it. So let's start off by building the structure. We're going to need the container, three containers, so we can duplicate those. We call one left for the left side. This one will contain our logo and one for the right side. Let's give this also a proper name that we at least know what it is. So we'll name this Apple Notch F. And after that, we'll add a div inside the left side. One containing our background and another one for our nav items. Items and PG. And we do the same on the right side. You're gonna understand why in a bit. Then we also need some items. So let's add them as well. And let's add them to the other side as well. And here we have our basic structure. We can also rename those so that we know what we're working with. It's always a good practice to do so. And now we're going to change the layout of our structure. So first off, we're going to select our parent. And then for display, we will select flex. We want them horizontal because we want them aligned from left to right without any gaps. Then we're going to also set from left to right and align the items to the end because then it will be against this section the right side we also will use the horizontal row and this will be our logo container so change that a little bit and in here we can add a logo we can find one there we go so let's get to the next step and it is adding a simple line before this navigation so we'll go to style we go to css and we'll be adding a class of apple notch nav and we'll add a root in here and add before we'll add a content because it can be empty it doesn't matter we want to add a black background we will set a position position absolute with a width width of 100 percent a height of five pixels because i don't want top notch to be big but small and set it to minus five to the top as you can see, it will add a black line. And if we set it to top minus five, it will go above the nav container. We also need to make sure that our in layout, we select a position of relative and add some margin to the top of five pixels to match the amount of pixels that the line height is. Next, we're going to change the left hand side. So we add a animation nav left so that we know that this is the left side of the navigation. And in style, we set a height of 29 pixels and also a min height of 29 pixels. So this is always net 29 pixels. A position of relative, and you will see and understand why in a minute. Now we can do the same for the right hand side, but then the other ways around. So let's change this real quick. A and F right. We want this also to be a column direction. Everything needs to be left aligned. And in the center, let's also do this with this one. And now everything is aligned in the center and looks nice. Now let's add our logo in. If you don't have a logo, there will be a link down in the description below where you can get the assets for free. When you download it, you will get the zip file, applenotch.assets, and we extract all. You see that there's a background JSON, which we can import by opening. By doing so, you see some JSON code. In the 15, you go to bricks and paste it in and allow it to. You get this nice gradient already as you can see there's also some image assets and that's those are the ones that we need for uh, our logo as well so we're going to select the image and we're going to upload all the svgs now if you're not able to upload the svgs you need to turn on a setting for that we need to be in the bricks builder you go to settings and in settings set svg uploads to administrator and then you hit save so this will make sure that you can upload svgs for a logo, so we'll be adding a class for that. We'll add a flex, a horizontal, everything needs to be centered. I don't want any gaps, so we put that to zero in style. I want this logo to be a little bit tinier. So I set a 30 pixel 
by 30 pixel as I hide. As you can see now, this is a bit smaller. And let's give this a nice black background. So we'll be using this as a color. We can also save it. Now let's change the background for this one. So we go to Apple Notch Navigation Background. Inside background, we want to select a black color. And we want the same one to be selected to this one. So we'll be adding the background as well. Now for the alignment, we want this to be a position at the absolute. Have zero top and zero height because then it will take up the height of its container. And the container that has a position relative is the left side and the right side. And let's also copy and paste the pixels for the left and right side as well. So that they are the same height. Now we need to add something specific for this item. But what we do is add another class of an nav pg and then left for this one. And we will be doing the same, but call it right on the other side. And these will contain our CSS. So in CSS, we'll be adding root and also add a before section. Because on these sides, we have some kind of um, arch going on. As you can see that you have downloaded. And instead of just using an image, I think it's better because it's a design accent to have it as a design accent. So as a background. So we'll add in content of empty and a background with a URL. But I don't know <laughs> where the file is exactly. So I press this WordPress button to edit in WordPress. We go back, go into site media, and then we select this one. And here you will see what the name is. Now I always omit the uh, domain name because I don't need it. Just copy this one in and paste it in there. Then we set this one to no repeat because we don't want to repeat and also align it to the top and left. And for width, we will be having it as a 75 pixel width. Now the image itself is 70 pixels, but I see that putting it in, in a 71 pixel, it will have a better result. It has a height of 30 pixels and we'll set display to block the position to absolute and then we'll put it to left minus 70 pixels because that's the width of our image. So what did what this does is create a box that is 70 by 30 pixels. You set it to display block to make it look like a box and then we position it absolute so it will position in a certain way and then we say all right I want you to align to left side but then negative 70 pixels so outside of the container. Now we can copy this and paste this on the other side but instead of the left side we wanted this to be the right side we want this to be right 70 pixels and the right border and as you can see that we have the image as well and if we take a look now we see that we have something already there so that's nice as you can see there's something going on with the height here because here it doesn't have any height and here it does have a height which I find strange, but that's how Bricks Builder is. Now let's make sure that when we hover our entire navigation, that something happens. We do that by going into our AN nav and inside our CSS, we'll add in our hover. So you can press R and then tap and we'll add the root selector ready for you. Then add a hover. So when the navigation AN nav is hovered, then we would like to select our AN nav background. So that is this one, but also this one. And make sure that their width is 100%. And as you can see, if we hover now, it's a little bit too big. So we need to change that. We go to the left. And in left, we set the content, the width to fit content. So it won't be wider than the content of what's inside. Now we see that there's something happening. We need to change our margins so let's remove those and also for the other containers and as you can see that already looks a little bit better now we also need to adjust the width on the right side to fit content and if we look now on the website we see that there is the animation that we're looking for but we have some white space going on and we need to fix that we can do this by changing the height of our logo and it's to be 23 pixels so it's smaller and we can remove the text because we don't need it. 
and if we hit save. So now our logo looks better, but there's still some white space going on. So we need to adjust our container and change the height to 29. As you can see, now it perfectly aligns. But there's some square going on on the logo, and I don't like that. The way I solved it is by going to our container and in border, our border radius, I set the bottom borders to 50 viewer wide by adding a unit of measure instead of percentage. It will round off the corners perfectly. And if we look at the front end that we have a nice rounded corner. Now to tweak it just a little, I want the local container to go upwards just sli ever so slightly. So half of the size uh, that we have added on the top. When it's closed, I like the outer edges to be a little bit more in the inside. So I want to change that next. We can do that by selecting our background again. And I want to change specifically the left side on this case. We go to transform and with translate X and Y, you can set a kind of offset. And I want the offset to be half of the width of this edge. And the edge is 30 pixels, so we can set it to 15 pixels. So as you can see, it will now cover half of the logo. We can also do that on the other side. So we select the right. And for this one, we will type in minus 15 pixels because it needs to scooch the other way. And if we hit save and look there, there's a very nice effect. But now our logo is a little bit hidden. We can easily fix that luckily by going to our logo container. Search for Z index. I really love the search, by the way. And then we hit save, refresh the page. And there we have our animation getting better and better. Now to make the next part a little bit more visible, we'll add a empty section above the navigation with some slight height because I don't like the admin bar being on top of that for now. So we can do that real quick. Let's set it somewhere in the 100 pixel height so that we have some spacing above. Because the next thing we're going to do is to animate the text link and to also make it look nicer. So we select our nav items and we'll be adding a class for this as well. So this is going to be an nav underscore items and we'll be adding the same one the other side and inside our topography let's first change the colors because it's not really visible right now now still we don't see our letters so we need to change the z index as well when we press one there is our text now it's visible if we hit save we can see that our text is now on top of the background now i want all the items to be aligned in the center. So I change the display to flex and align them all in the center on the cross axis. And then if we look again, you can see that it's now aligned nicely, but it needs to change just a little because the image is also a little bit upwards. So we can do that by going to stars again and add a negative 2.5 pixel. So that it gets a little bit higher. As you can see, now it's nicely aligned with the logo. Now, I would like to add some spacing between the text and the logo. And we can do that by add, going inside our padding and add a padding you'd like. And I add a padding for 1.2. As you can see, this looks now nicely spaced. But I think the text links are very close to each other. So we need to change that next by going into our content. And we'll be adding a column gap of 1.2 rem. So as you can see, it now starts to look nicer and nicer with each change that we do. The next thing we want to do is by default, the text links need to be outside of this container. To do that, we need to add a class for our items. We'll be adding an nav item and we'll be adding that to each item so that we can style them in one go instead of doing them separately every time. And we're going to start off with them being not visible. We go to style. And inside our transform, we will translate the Y position to minus 80%. So it will be above our navigation. And as you can see, it's still visible, but it is 80% above there. Maybe in this case, I want, we need to put it a little bit higher. So let's put it 100%. And as you can see, they're not visible, but they are there. 
if you press Ctrl A, you see the text in there. So next, we need to animate that this goes downwards. So how do we do that? We select our navigation, go inside CSS. And because this is another hover effect, we can do something neat. And that is by using a child selector. So we put root in there. Hit N. And if we hit save now, you see that our effect is still working. And this is because we can have a sub selector. So this actually replaces what we have before. Now we want to add the end selector again. So we type in root and then minus item because it will have the same basic name, but then with underscore underscore. So we need to write the correct one else it doesn't work. And in here we'll transform our translate X. This is the value that we set just before to zero. So on hover, make sure that the items are back in place. And as you can see, when we are not hovering and select everything is outside of the navigation, but when you hover, it moves down. So these are the basic things that we needed to be done. So the next thing is animating those. And we can do that by adding a transition. So we go to the parts that are animated. So our background, for instance, and inside the transition, we can simply set ease in and ease out for all 0.6 if we want to have it a little bit slower. Make sure that you select the NFBG and inside transition, you will add ease in out for all because we want the effect to be happening for the BG and but also for the other BG. So as you can see, they now both are the same, but the animation is still not happening. And this is because we didn't set, a, set our starting width. So inside layout in width, we select zero. And when we hit save, you will see that the animation is happening. So that's part one of the animation. That's nice. Next will be to make the links go inwards. So we do that by select our items and inside our items will be setting the same transition. So inside of CSS is in and out 0.2 seconds for all. And if we hit save, you can see that they are all going together. This has to do but there is no timing for them. You need to set a delay for each item. So what we do is add some classes for the timing. And this is quite tedious, but we need to have it. So we will add a class of an in of two, because we want this to animate in secondly. And the other item will be called an one. For the other ones, it will be the same. So the inner one will be an one. And the outer one will be an two. This can be very tedious, but we need to set it up else it doesn't work really well. And for our selector, we'll select the root because we only want to animate this section. We select the an in one. And in here, we want a transition delay of zero seconds. And on two, we want to have 0.1 seconds delay. For some reason, we need to be more specific in this tutorial than I initially did during the live streams. So we need to add an dash nav items because that's this one so that the animation will be added. And as you can see, now the animation in is happening. But we would like to change when the animation is out that it is reversed. So we'll do that by copying it, pasting it in here, make it a little bit more beautiful to look at and then copy the ampersand. And if we look now what happens, now one of them needs to be reversed. And it's the one when it goes from hover to normal. So we need to adjust the normal one. We set this to three and zero. So the reversed of the hover and hit save. And if we now look, we see that it not, it's nicely reversed. Maybe we need to add a, just a little bit of delay to the first section. And now it comes in nicely. Now to take it one step further, we can add a little bit of blur to the animation as well. And a little bit of scaling to make it look like it's like it's transitioning in. So let's do that right now. Inside our transform, we'll be adding a scale of 1.5. And inside CSS in filters, we set a blur of 5. Now we need, also need to reset this. So we go to ANF and set our root item to filter without a blur and let's change the transform we need to add a skill of one 
so that it will be 100% of its size instead of 1.5 which is 150% of its size and if we hit save we see that there are our animation is done. There is something weird going on with one pixel light here. Well, if we zoom out just a little bit, because I need to be zoomed in for this tutorial, you see that nothing is happening and the animation is now done. Now we can remove this section and we would like to make this section sticky. So we search for position and instead of relative, we can make it fixed. So we'll be fixed on the top of the website. And if we scroll down, you see that it is nicely fixed. Now I see that in this section there's some blurriness going on. This is because we added a blur. So we need to adjust our transformation by the amount of blur that has been added. So I think in this case 130 will make sense. As you can see it still transitions in and out nicely. And now it's also nicely fixed. But there's one thing we still can change to make this even a little bit better. And to do this, we need JavaScript I've added inside of the assets. So we go to our dashboard. We install a code plugin. Now, my favorite one that I that I love to use is WP Codebox. It is also integrated with Advanced Themer, a very nice plugin that I really recommend to purchase. But you don't have to. And we can activate Codebox and inside code box, we can add our JavaScript. We call this scroll body because it's adding a class when we are scrolling and inside type, we will select JavaScript. Now we go to inside our folder and in here you have body scroll.js. And if you open that one up and copy everything that's in there and paste it in here, you see a lot of code being added. And actually what the code does is checks if the page is scrolling up or downwards and add a class to the body scroll up when it's scrolling up and scroll down when it's scrolling down and if and if it reaches the top of the web page it will remove either of them so we hit save and we enable it because we want to enable i also want this code to be added in our front end footer so it will be loaded later and hit save again and as you can see on the right hand side when we scroll down, it will add a class called scroll down. If you scroll up, it will add a class scrolled up. And when it's on the top, it will remove either of the classes. And now we can play around with just a little bit of CSS on the nav. And we'll be using a not selector. And that's very fun. So when the body doesn't, so not, have a class of scroll dash down, I want root to also do the things and the things are having the navigation available and also the navigation expanded so when we hit save and refresh the page now it is open on top of the website but if we scroll down it will remove itself and if we just ever so slightly scroll up it will be visible again if we scroll down and hover it will also be visible again and this makes for a very nice user experience. Now you have a beautiful looking animation for this section. And I think that this looks great. But we can also go a step further. And we can add a animation for our hero section to make this even look more nice. And if you want to see how you can do that as well, there is a video up there. So for this navigation, I know there are some things that are missing. We don't have covered accessibility, we don't have covered a drop down menu or a sub menu, and we haven't covered the mobile version for this. If you would like to see how I would solve it, you can subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on how I do the optimizations. I want to thank you for watching and see you next time. Keep designing.